in the in the first half with the Schulenberg Shorthorns now on a roll. This is the mention here. We have Chuck Brown Ford, Double B Foods Incorporated, Bubba and Karen Dagan, Don Blancet, Schulenberg Tires, Alfredo and Mildred Valenzuela, Victoria Bank and Trust, Prime Industries, and W. A. Fark. Jared Schrammick to kick off with the Schulenberg Shorthorns with Schulenberg leading 17 to nothing with 11.47 to go in the first half. Schulenberg and another touchdown, a run back of an interception pass by the senior Steven Sarton and a great block. Here's a kickoff, gets to the 42 yard line, buried again by the young Mr. man we Mychek. mentioned earlier, uh, uh, Brad Mychek. Let go of the headhunter out there tonight. On that great run back by Sarton, uh, Chad Ginter laid a heck of a block. Uh, excellent block there. That, that sprung the play. He might have got in it in the first place, but uh, that just sealed it right there. He had nobody to chase him after that. Schulenberg, or Shiner, rather, to set up shop first and 10 from their own 42-yard line. 11.43 to go in the first half. They trail 17 to nothing. And off to number 25, Jason Cowan. Pickup of maybe a couple on the play. And this is getting to the point now, uh, Jeff, where Shiner needs to do something and needs to do something positive in a hurry. They're going to have to uh, break the big play or, or get some type of momentum their way to uh, change the side right now. It's, this keeps going. Uh, Schulenberg's going to keep gaining momentum and gaining momentum. And I don't believe they can afford to let that happen. Yeah, it could be a long night for Shiner if they don't do something to turn it around here. It's a second and we'll call it second and seven. Ball spotted squarely on the 45-yard line. That's the 45-yard line of Shiner. Grant Kubechka comes wide to the left side. Busted play again. Quarterback sneak. Was it, a, was it a busted play? It, I can't tell if it's busted or he, he looks like he's going to have the dive and there's no handoff and he just kind of turns it up himself. It's almost too slow for a quarterback sneak, but uh, I figure a quarterback sneak's going to be a little quicker into the line. Uh, I don't know if he's waiting for his – he's still getting some yards out of it. Uh, yeah. So it's still a positive game, but it's still leaving him third and too long of a situation. He picked up a couple there. We'll call it second down and – we'll call it second and five – or third down, I should say. Third down and five for Shiner. The ball spotted at the 47-yard line of Shiner. Clock shows 10.25 to go, and the clock runs. Ventura, the quarterback for the Comanche. Scott Werner coming wide to the left side. And Shiner just took too much time getting that play off. Actually, they never got it off. And the five yards are going to be marked off back. And we'll put the ball back to the 42-yard uh, line. Dan, if I might interlude for a second, uh, we need to, uh, as I mentioned before, we had Mr. W.A. Fark as one of our sponsors. Uh, it's sad to say he passed off this week for uh, a, a great supporter of the Schulenberg ISD and the, and the, the various programs. It's going to be a big loss to the community, a big loss to the program. Uh, if everybody please say a prayer for him. Here is Shiner. I believe that's going to be a fumble. Oh, now they're going to say he tried to throw the ball. Well, a good break for Shiner right there. Uh, looks like he was trying to bring it back down, but uh, and nonetheless, it's going to be a fourth and long in, in a punting situation, Dan. Either trying to bring it back down or just trying to get rid of it, but either way, it's going to bring up a fourth down as they rule it was an incomplete pass. 9.55 to go. The clock is stopped with that incompletion. And Cowan, number 25, will punt the ball away, standing on his own 30-yard line. Pretty good uh, rush by Shepard. The ball goes straight up in the air, practically straight yeah. up. Takes a Schulenberg roll. And Shiner downs it on the 43. Excellent field position for Schulenberg. I don't know if it's the field that's giving him a problem with his footing on his punting stance, but he's not getting off. I watched him in the warm-up, and he was getting off some nice boomers. I don't know if the, the pressure is getting to him a little bit or the, or the footing of the field like we talked about, but uh, he's giving Schulenberg some pretty good field position here, and I don't know if that's a good idea right now. Uh, 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 at this point, Jeff, you'd almost have to say it's total domination by Schulenberg. Right now, but uh, if anybody knows Shiner long enough, that, that can turn around in a moment. Adams goes wide to the left side. Jamie Jackson joins him in a slot there. Steven Sarton barks the signal with Wright and Houston in the backfield. Long count. Here's the handoff to Houston. Not much running room. He may have picked up a yard on the play, brought down by D.J. Frick. And we talked to Coach Houston earlier this week, and he was real impressed with this Frick youngster from Shiner. Plays good defense. Uh, the whole defensive line he had a lot of praise for. The whole defense period with a lot of team speed. In some instances, that's great. In some instances, that can be some over-pursuit and, and, and can hurt you. But as the weeks have – it's helped Shiner more than hurt him by far. 
Uh, maybe it's hurting him tonight a little bit. Kurt Bozetsny is wide to the left side. Jackson is in a slot on the right side. Houston and right in the backfield. Jackson's in motion, and Sarton barks the signals. Hand off to Houston. Not much running room. As a matter of fact, he may actually lose a, a, a yard on the play, bottled up there by a host of Shiner Comanches. Short gain on that. Uh, we need to take some time off this clock. I like this game philosophy here. And, and uh, second half is generally Schulenberg's half. We've uh, been able to wear it to people down, and, and uh, hopefully that'll lead its course again tonight. But uh, if we can just keep this nice lead right here, and if we're lucky enough to add on to it, that's a plus. Well, they did uh, credit Houston with a gain of yard on the play. It'll bring up a third down, and we'll call it a long eight, third and eight for the Horns. Two receivers split wide to the right, starting to pass. Screen one's out to Jackson. He's got it at the 50, breaks the tackle, and hit out of bounds by yeah, two players. Help. He was hit twice by two, twice by Comanches out of bounds. Well, the first one was, was a, a questionable close call. He was driving him out of bounds. It was quick, but the second one was very definite, and there wasn't any hesitation by the referee on that call there. Uh, not a good – it would have been a close play right there for a measurement, I looked anyway, but uh, we might have had it anyway. But uh, I think we would have probably had it. It looked like it would have about the 45-yard line, which would have given us enough, but it, uh, it may have Definitely been now. That's right. Big, uh, big penalty marked off against the Comanche. Uh, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. And the ball will be spotted now at the 31-yard line. So Schulenberg working with a brand-new set of downs from their – the 31-yard line of Shiner with 8.20 to go in the first half. Bozetsny comes wide to the right side. Jackson is in a slot on the right side. Marek is wide left. Houston and right in the backfield. Sarton barks the signals. Looks like he may be calling an audible here. Did you get that impression? Uh, he might have been changing the play there. He, uh, Coach Houston is well known for that, to uh, look over the defense and maybe change his play there. I don't know if we, we got lucky enough there to have a... a Offsides on, on Shiner? We'll I, see here. I, I think it is. Shiner's backing up. Yeah, I think. Very fortunate. It looked mighty close to us getting almost delay a game there. Uh, he does it. He's normally known for one or two of those a game because he studies. But in the long run, it pays off for us, Dan. It's, it's helped us many years, you know, twofold. And it, the loss we've absorbed by it. But um, fortunately, they gave us a break and took a five yard penalty for us. That'll move the ball to the 26 yard line. So it'll be first and five for Schulenberg. And this is a. This is the circumstances where Coach Hoosman and, and Steven Sarton, they like this first and five, so many possibilities. Well, so many weapons, Dan. There's just there's <laughs> endless possibilities where we can go. And you can gamble, and I looked for him to gamble here. They're there going to go. throw. Sarton rolling wide right. Nothing open. Now he's got something in the end zone. What a Touchdown! catch. What a catch. Beautiful. As good of a catch as you'll ever see in high school football by Jamie Jackson. Dan, one or five eight, it doesn't matter. He's a heck of an athlete. He jumped. Golly. I'd pull a muscle trying to do that. It looked beautiful. His jump timed it just perfectly right over Shiner defenders. I think he was actually the secondary receiver. I think St Stephen wanted to go to Bazette's knee in the flat, but he was not open, and then he looked, and uh, there was Jackson. I don't know how he got behind him. He's, he's got good speed. I'm not going to say world-class world speed by any means, but he's got good enough speed, but that's not the man you want to leave alone. Here's the attempt for the extra point as Schulenberg goes up 23 to nothing now on a huge pass from Sarton to Jackson. Snap, here's the kick. It looks, no, I think Locked. Shiner may have gotten some. They somewhere. got a piece of that ball. Not, not a full block, but they got a piece of it. So the clock is stopped with 8-12 to go in the first half. Our score, the Schulenberg Shorthorns, 23. The Shiner Comanches, nothing. Well, it looks like we've come out to a real fine start, Dan. I don't think anybody quite expected this. We prepared well, it looks like. Yeah, Schulenberg very impressive here as they lead 23 to nothing with 8-12 to go in the first half. Jared Schrammick to kick off for the Schulenberg Shorthorns. Here's a kick that rolls down to the 15-yard line. The best kick Schrammick's had tonight. Get Shiner yeah, good coverage. gets away from a couple of uh, runners, number 34. Uh, T.J. Fistler gets the ball out to about the, uh, what will that be, about the 27-yard line. I have to give credit to Aaron Strick there. A nice play to turn him. He hit him, had a blocker on him, and, and still made the hit enough to knock him off his balance where he couldn't get a, a good run back on it. So Shiner will start up first and 10 from their own 27-yard line. 8.06 to go in the first half. Split receivers, one to the right, one to the left. Ventura, the quarterback. He barks the signals. 
Hand off to Cowan. Cowan over the right side, breaks it open. He could go all the way and just couldn't quite keep his footing, and he'll get 11 yards out of it. Best play for Shiner so far this year. Got a Shiner man down. We don't like to see that in anybody. Marty Bame, 160-pound uh, senior, is down. that uh, the young man, number 12, Marty Bame, is going to be all right. He's helped off the field, but he looks like he's going to be all right. And nothing major, we hope. As we come back to play, it'll be uh, first and 10 for the Shiner Comanches with 7.50 to go in the first half. They trail 23 to nothing. Hand there off to we go. number five, who goes absolutely nowhere, Bobby Werner, and a host of horns hit him there. Uh, among them was Paco Valenzuela, I believe, and also 63. Brian Valenzuela. By, uh, Brian Valenzuela, right. We're getting good penetration in the line, Dan. That's making a big difference. When a play like a counter trade takes some developing to do, if we can uh, get in that backfield quicker, that it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't develop. Second down and 10, 7.13 to go. Shiner just can't get anything going here offensively. Ventura with a long throw down the field. Incomplete. Intended for number four, Grant Kubechka. He was being covered nicely all the way by uh, Adam Bozel. He showed a nice, a nice arm there, a uh, good distance on that pass. Uh, doesn't look like their receivers quite have the, rece the, the speed that their backs do, and, and that could benefit Schulenberg. Schulenberg has good speed on the, in the defensive backfield. Uh, yeah, their best part of their uh, speed-wise is there. Uh, Bozel had him covered all the way. It would have taken a perfect pass to... He's been one pleasant surprise for us, Dan. He's uh, really stepped up and, and took a leadership role in that defensive back. But you can play him anywhere, and he does the job. We're talking about junior Adam Bozel, six foot, 170 pounder. And growing. 7.05 to go. Ventura, the quarterback, back to pass, getting pressure. Throws another one here to the sidelines. Bozel breaks it up at the 15. Step for step with him. There's, uh, he threw it into good coverage. Not a lot of open receivers there, Dan. He had to get rid of that ball. He had some linebackers breathing on him pretty heavy. He didn't have much more time to sit back there. Uh, excellent rush again. If we can keep pressure on him and make him pass, their running game has been pretty much non-existent so far. And that's, uh, if we can get another score here, Lord, it could get real ugly. 6.57 to go. The clock is stopped with that last uh, incompletion. And Cowan will punt the ball away for the Comanche standing on his 26-yard uh, line. Back to receive the punt is Jamie Jackson. It's a pretty good yeah, punt here. Jackson takes it at the 25, to the, 30, to the 35, to the 40, to the 45. Now to midfield, no, to the 45. Hit. hit out of bounds again at the 45-yard line of Shiner. That was two yards out of bounds. He got hit again. The referee was right there. Don't quite understand that call. He got a little lip service there from that one. So... So Schulenberg will set up shop first and 10 from the 46-yard line of Shiner. Well, he had some good uh, hang time on the other punts and, and allowed the coverage to get down there. Unluckily, that low punt there gave us time to set up a return. It was Jackson's speed. He's got an excellent vision of the field. Made a finer turn out of it. Stephen Adams, uh, wide left. Jamie Jackson in a slot on the, uh, uh, on the left. Marek is tight right. Hand off to Houston. Around the right side, breaks it open, gets to the 41-yard line before he's brought down there. We've got Houston so far for 10 carries for 85 yards, Dan. That's an 8.5-yard average, and that's, that's not a shabby average against a defense that's only yielding 126 yards total per game. We've got over 200 in the first half so far. Let me recognize some of those linemen doing such a heck of a job up front. Chris Urich, 66, a six, uh, six foot, 185 pound senior. Uh, here we go with a second down and four now. Sarton barks the signals. Hand off to right, he goes nowhere. No gain on the play. A good defensive stand there, a real good defensive plug in the middle. Also, some of those linemen up front, Dan Dagan, number 78. Dan Dagan is a 6'1", 245 pound junior. Also up front, uh, number 70. Uh, se let's see, uh, 70. Greg Segura. Greg Segura, 76. Greg is a 6'1", 240-pound senior. Of course, the center, who has done an excellent job for the last three years, I guess, Dustin Bozel, 
5'9", 160-pound senior. I think he's been a starting center since his sophomore year. Sarton throws one out, complete to yeah. Jackson. He's at the 30, gets to the 29, and brought down there. And Sarton led him perfectly. Jackson was uh, standing there waiting for it. Sarton threw it out in front of him, and he took it for yardage. One thing that, that doesn't show up in the stats or doesn't whatever, Dan, if you get a chance to look at the back blocking, Jason Houston and Brandon Wright do an excellent job of picking up blitzing linebackers or, or stunning uh, linemen and so on, picking up and giving him that little bit extra time there's many times you're going to see Shiner Lyman getting cut and, and, and the pass getting completed in, in because of that block. Schulenberg now with a first and 10 from the 29-yard line of Shiner. Clock runs with 4.54 to go in the first half. They lead 23 to nothing. Hand off to Houston. Houston breaks it open, and he is going to be collared down at about the... Uh, 26 yard line I believe uh, he, one more step and he'd have been passing but that's a good pursuit again we have another shiner man down see number 76 for the Comanches walk off the field uh, he's going to be all right shaking up also want to recognize another offensive lineman doing a fine job out there for the horns Donovan Kuja he's been tough for a number of years for the horns here's a second down Sarton screens went out to Jackson oh he's got some running room this could do it He's to the 10, oh. he's to the 5, he's in, touchdown. That screen, Dan, has been there all year. That's one of our best plays. Utilize his speed. He's got some moves and just a nose for the ball. He doesn't drop a lot. Uh, he took some licks last week against Weimer. Uh, Weimer really came out and played us a heck of a good game. Well, right now it is 29 to nothing. It is all Schulenberg here this evening. One person I'd like to thank, Dan, I never get to say it, is my wife. She, gets to, she has to put up with me dreaming at night about this and uh, letting me go every Friday night to get to do this broadcast. Her and my son finally get to come to a game tonight. I'd like to thank her for allowing me to do this. Well, of course, you and Kevin do such a fine job. We're talking about Kevin Fishbeck, and I'm subbing in for him this week and uh, just happy to do so. Here's Stephen Sartons holding of the next uh, kick, extra point. Shepard puts it through. It's 30 to nothing. Dan, we'd really like to thank you for helping us out in this situation. Uh, your experience is invaluable. I'd hate to have to do this by myself uh, with my lack of experience, should I say. It's like we haven't missed a step here. Well, it's certainly a pleasure to work with you. I've enjoyed every uh, minute of it so far. We're at 4.11 to go in the first half. 30 to nothing, our score. We'd like to go ahead and mention a few more of our sponsors here. Diamond S Restaurant, Fox Fire Builders, J.O. Renner, 10th Frame Bowling, Audubon Travel Shop, Emco, Ken and Sherry Banks Owners, Crumb Shack Wagner Insurance Agency, Kelly and Doris Sarton, Schulenberg Livestock Auction Incorporated, Zimmerman's Garage, Vernon and Fawn Zimmerman Owners, Schulenberg Printing and Office Supplies and Sports Specialties, the Prosky Family, Dan and Jill Tabor, Baumgart Matula, Bruce and Cindy Bozel, 3D Belt Company, Steve and Sharice Dees, backing the Lady Horns and Short Horns. Without these sponsors, this telecast wouldn't be possible, and we appreciate every bit of it. You know, Jeff, I remember last year when Schulenberg played East Bernard, I think it was their first uh, district game against East Bernard. That was kind of the barometer to see how good Schulenberg was going to be. We pretty well dominated that game and went on the rest of the way pretty easily. I think this game may be a barometer for us, and if that's the case, things look pretty good for Schulenberg. Oh, it definitely was. Uh, Shiner was by far one of our strangest and opponents we are going to have to face, and uh, we sure have come to play, I guarantee you that. Here's the kick by uh, Tromick, picked up by Cowan, drugged down at about the 35-yard uh, line by, I believe it was Kurt Bozetsny, I believe, yes, Kurt Bozetsny brought him Good coverage down. again, Dan, real good coverage again. Uh, our special teams have proven to uh, be a, a big factor for us this year. If I'm not mistaken, we haven't had a, a punt return or a kick return returned on us. Well, excuse me, a punt return last week from Weimer. I didn't think about that one, but uh, they've done a fine job in not giving up the big play and uh, playing solid special teams. First and 10 for Shiner, trailing 30 to nothing, 4.05 to go, first half action. We've noticed that Lyndon Lee has not been in the backfield the past few series. I uh, hope the young man didn't have an injury or anything that we have to worry about. Triple receivers to the left, right side, and they run to the left side. Cowan breaks a couple of tackles before he's finally brought down by Gintert and Sarton and Shepard. Well, another good job by Bozesny by turning that play in. He's not getting his full head of steam to make that corner and turn it upfield. He has to worry about that defensive end and cutting it up in. And that gives enough time for the linebackers and the safeties to come up and fill and make that play. Uh, a, a nice job of coaching to prepare for that sweep. And without Lee in there, that, that's making a big difference, I guarantee you. 
Cowan picked up about three on the play. It'll bring up second and seven for the Comanches again. Triple the receivers to the right side. One in the backfield is Cowan. Quarterback Ventura keeps it, and boy, is he hit by Paco Valenzuela and uh, I believe it's Ginter. You know, he's real good with his fakes, Dan. Uh, if you've noticed, it, there's, there's a lot of times it's kind of hard to tell who has the ball. Schillenberg's uh, either scouted him good enough or seen enough films on him that know, uh, hey, we've got to watch every aspect of this quarterback that anything can happen at any moment. That was Ricky Hernandez who had a good lick on Ventura on that last play. It'll bring up a third down and three. Ball spotted at the 42-yard line. That's Shiner's own 42. Again, three receivers go wide to the right side. Actually, one in a slot. Actually, two in a slot and one wide to the right. One in the backfield. Ventura screens one out. Incomplete. Way off the mark. He's having to hurry that passes. He's a... Uh felt a few footsteps uh, this whole game and I'm sure he's worried about taking that backside lick there and he's getting rid of that ball pretty early. And at this point, Jeff, you, you know there's got to be some frustration on the part of Shiner. I mean, they came in here with aspirations of knocking off Schulenberg and they find themselves 30 nothing behind. Well, it's a shame to see that this happened uh, to such a fine team. Shiner's a, a class program and a fine team and uh, you'd like to see them in the playoffs. Uh, they represent the area real good every year and uh, it's a shame to see somebody's going to have to be out of this. Here's Cowan's punt, pretty good punt, taken uh, by Jamie Jackson at the 45. He's to the 40, knocked down at about the 46-yard line. But there's penalty markers on the play, and we haven't seen many penalties tonight. It's been a pretty clean game. Uh, this is usually a pretty heated rivalry, and the, the, the temper's have been real cool, which is a, a testimony to both coaches. I like to see a good clean game, and I'm sure... The coaches do, too. They don't want to see the penalty flag, but it uh, looks like we're going to have something against the Shorthorns here. I believe it was holding on the return, which is going to move the ball back, well, to about the, what, 25-yard line? Let's see where they spot it. They'll put it on the 29-yard line, so it'll be a first and 10 for the Horns. Clock shows 2.30 to go in the first half. Schulenberg leading 30 to nothing. It's been all Horns so far tonight. And as Jeff Prosky mentioned earlier, uh, Lyndon Lee, the uh, uh, outstanding player for Shiner, hasn't seen much action since, I guess, about the first quarter or so. It's probably near the end of the first quarter. So, I, I, like I said before, I thought I might have saw a little injury when he came up lame on one play. But Sarton works out of the shotgun for the first time tonight. I think it's the first time. Eluding some pass rushers. He gets away from a bunch of them. Now he's going to try to run, and he is not going to. He's going to be knocked out of bounds for some uh, loss of yardage. Uh, he, he about the right, well, in fact, he almost gained a yard, Dan. Well, I think a you're good right. play just to not lose yards and get out of bounds. You don't want to take the big lick right there. He had no blockers in front of him. I believe that was one of the first times we've seen him work out of a shotgun tonight. They've, they've done that seldom. They haven't had to uh, do it a whole lot. There. But uh, when you get into a two-minute drill, you want to get that quarterback a little more time, possibly, back there in the pocket. 2.19 to glow. The uh, clock is stopped with uh, Sarton going out of bounds. 30 to nothing, Schulenberg leading. Bezetsny comes wide to the right side. Adams is wide left. Jamie Jackson and Marek is wide left, or I should say in a slot on the left. Sarton back to pass out of the shotgun again. Throws one out. Long pass. Intercepted at midfield, or about the 40, I should say. Now to midfield, to the 45. And he is going to be brought down by Jamie Jackson and... Uh, I think it was uh, Dustin Bozel who finally brought him down at about the 37 yard line. So Shiner will take over first and 10 from there. Just uh, uh, Sarton threw it up there, but uh, really the two receivers were had the man covered all the way. One of the few two defenders, maybe, bad, maybe bad decisions he's made this, uh, today, but uh, you can't fault him for that. He's wanting a little more. Ventura now calls a timeout. 2.03 to go. The Schulenberg Shorthorns leading 20, uh, 30 to nothing. Uh, Mr. Sleepy back here doing a fine job on the camera as he does every week. If you see Greg, tell him, keep it up. He's doing a fine job. Well, the Horns uh, will be on defense as we come back to play as Ventura and uh, Shiner called a timeout there as they came up to the line of scrimmage. Didn't like something that they saw in the defensive formation of the Horns and called a timeout. First and 10 for Shiner. Ventura barks the signals. Screens one out. This is complete. 
good play. Number four, Grant Kubechka, but uh, number four, Jared uh, Schrammick broke that up. He was uh, able to break through a good block by the Shiner receiver out there to, to make a part of that play and keep it to a minimal game, mainly then keep it in bounds, keep that clock running. That's exactly right. The clock runs with a minute 40 to go in the first half, 30 to nothing our score. Shiner picked up a couple that time, so we'll call it, uh, we'll call it second and seven. They may have picked up three on that play. A score here can help Shiner. It can get them some momentum for the second half here. They need this big. Almost a, a must for them. They, they need to get on the scoreboard here in the worst way. Here's a pass out in the flat way up high and over the head of the intended receiver, Grant Kubechka, and the clock has stopped with a minute 20. Well, Shiner, uh, to the best of my knowledge, is not used to having to pass and uh, being in this position behind this much early this, this early in the game. And, uh, Maybe it's getting him out of their game plan and, and doing something out of the ordinary for him. And not having Lyndon Lee in there in the backfield is really hurting him. I, 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 hope, he, I hope he's, a, he's in good shape. That boy is destined to play for sat in Saturday for somebody. Uh, hopefully it's nothing real, real serious for him. Uh, talk to some Shiner people. He's a fine young man, and uh, you don't want to see that to happen to anybody. Robert Bruins checks in offensively for the uh, Comanches. He comes to a slot on the left side. Too much time. And now we're going to have too much time taken by Shiner. And that'll move him back five yards. And that's right in that area where, uh, where they could not afford to lose those five yards. It moves him back to the 35 yard line, or check that to the 40 yard line. And now they're faced with a third and 12. So sort of a critical area here for Shiner wanting to get on the scoreboard and they go